having a good hair day today. I'm always a little embarrassed when people ask me how I style my hair. Well, I only wash my hair one, maybe two times a week. I never brush it. And I usually style it by uh, embracing the bed head that I wake up with. So there you go. And it's like a wave of disappointment <laughs> comes over their face. Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. All right, hey there, fashion friends. Welcome to today's episode. Seven tips on how to always look edgy. <laughs> If you've been following along on my how to find your personal style series this is definitely a little takeaway uh, sort of segue from that i speak to myself always having that style mood of edge because it's how i elevate my style so i'd say for the most part every look that i style every single day um, on some sort of spectrum, I always have some bit of edge. So today's video is basically just my seven personal tips that I use to always have that edginess or have that chic sort of mood or vibe with my looks. Now, when I speak to edge, I don't always mean your sort of obvious stereotypical edge. I more mean just something that's different, something that's taking your look away from the mainstream, away from the expected. I don't always mean the, you know, stereotypical edge like combat boots or tattoos or whatever, you know, comes with that, you know, kind of cliche edge. It's more of kind of a approach, I guess. So with that, let's get into it. Okay, number one is hair. I think hair is a massive tool for styling. And I think if that's something you're not doing right now, if that's not something you're prioritizing right now, that is something that can completely change your game. I'd say I actually didn't realize this until kind of my late 20s, probably like mid, mid to late 20s. Uh, I always had fun with my hair. I always like, especially in high school, I was always experimenting and doing fun things, but I don't think I realized how important it is to that edgy aesthetic that I love so much. So it was having a little bit of a quarter life crisis and uh, I was chatting with my friend at work and said, you know, yeah, I really like that Ellie Golding, you know, side shave look. And she was like, yeah, do it. She was like, get your groove back. So I did it and that completely transformed me for sure. It basically made me believe in the power of hair when it comes to style because once I did that, it was crazy because anything I put on, any outfit I put on, I felt like that hair instantly elevated it. It instantly added that little bit of edge to the look. And I think this was really where I, I fell in love with the whole classic pieces that mixed with that edgy haircut because I just felt like it had that perfect amount of balance because I didn't want a super, super edgy, you know, outfit that was going to kind of tip that scale um, with the edginess. I liked the idea of counteracting the edginess of the hair with the classic or vice versa. So yeah, now you know, almost 10 years later, it's still a huge priority for me. So I definitely say, if you're somebody that's feeling like you're in a style rut, start with the hair for sure. Don't have to go extreme like me, you know, I've, sh I've shaved my head, I've bleached my hair to absolute oblivion. I mean, I've done it all, <laughs> I've done it all. So I don't think you have to go extreme, but I would say just do something that just kind of shakes it up a bit. Maybe it's getting bangs, you know, like bangs can, do so much like it's just little things like that and if you're not really sure maybe just go to your hairstylist and ask like what something they think you could do like what's something they think you could shake it up a little bit um, for your face structure for your style uh, for your comfort level um, so yeah okay number two is shoes kind of an obvious one I feel like I talk about those a lot and I think most people add a lot of style to their looks with shoes The thing that's difficult about shoes is that when you're picking them, they're kind of, they're, they stand on their own, right? So as when you're picking them, they're not with 
the ensemble. They're just this kind of entity entity that's sitting on their own on a like pedestal, uh, literally on a pedestal. Yeah, it's easy to just romanticize this pair of shoes. And so I think it's really important to really figure out the things that you love about shoes and specific things that uh, work for you really well and just keep those in mind. It gives you a better idea of, you know, what's gonna really work and what's really gonna elevate your look. Now for me, because I like to have that bit of edginess, a big part of where I add in that edginess is with my shoes. I have a very specific idea of how I want my shoes to work for me and what they're going to add to your looks, to your wardrobe. It makes it so much easier down the road to then have that effortless style, to have that effortless edginess, because then you know that you can just throw on like a basic look, like a jeans and t-shirt, and throw on those pair of shoes, and it's gonna instantly edge it up or instantly add that style that you, that you want. It's more than just buying some shoes that you really like. It's really having that intention and, and making sure that they specifically serve the purpose that you want. Number three is tasteful touches of novelty. Okay, so this isn't something I always do, but I'm definitely somebody that gets pulled in by novelty sometimes. And I never know when it's gonna hit. It'll all of a sudden just kind of hit me in the face and I'll become obsessed with it. I was just scrolling through Pinterest and I saw a look, a thrifted outfit, and they had like this Winnie the Pooh button up and it had like this big massive Winnie the Pooh like print or like embroidery on it. And although I wasn't specifically drawn to that one, I I love Winnie the Pooh. I was obsessed with Winnie the Pooh growing up. I was like my go-to character. Uh, my go-to love was Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. A little something you might've not known about Emily Wheatley. So I was became obsessed. I'm like, oh, I want, that's what I want. So then I was on eBay, like obsessively looking for like a Winnie the Pooh shirt that spoke to me. Um, I didn't want something too in your face. I didn't want something too overboard. I just wanted something with like a light bit of novelty. And I found it with this t-shirt. But what I like about a little bit of novelty is when done right, when done tastefully, it's just that little bit of flavor, that little bit of fun. Because then if you're somebody like me who has a pretty classic minimalist style, it's really fun to shake things up with a little bit of novelty sometimes, just mixed in with the rest of the classic sort of silhouettes and classic styles. Um, to then just add a little bit of uniqueness and a little bit of spice. Uh, I especially love things that are, you know, secondhand or vintage that aren't necessarily something that everybody else is gonna have. Um, I think that's more fun. Number four is makeup. I more mean like it's more of a vibe. So I've seen women where they don't wear any makeup and it's crazy how it almost in a way, or they at least wear such a minimal amount that it doesn't look like they're wearing any makeup. And to me, what I love about that is it sort of conveys a confidence and effortlessness that is very cool and edgy in my opinion. But it's more just embracing what makes you feel the best. So if not wearing makeup makes you feel beautiful and the best version of yourself, then do that because I think it's just exuding that confidence. For me personally, the way I like to approach my makeup is, as you guys have seen, I like to try to go as minimal as possible. I don't like to have too much color. I like to just accent what I already have. I will say that I think it makes a massive difference for me. Like I feel so much better when I have that makeup. Um, and it, to me, when my makeup's done, it adds so much more of a vibe, so much more of an edge to what I'm wearing. All right, number five is the sneaky unexpected details. So you guys may have heard me talk about this before. So what I mean by this is things like a good sock pop. Sometimes maybe you don't even see it until you're sitting down and you know you cross your leg over and then the you know pant rises a bit and just shows that little sock pop. Sometimes it's just that. It's just, I wear socks specifically just for that moment, for those revealing 
moments as well as that just little styling details like cuffing of the jeans when it's when it feels right like if you have a really cool pair of steezy boots and the inseam is maybe just a little too long adding in that cuff will taper the leg will kind of frame the shoe a lot more and other things is just like little like just rolling the rolling of your sleeve like an effortless kind of disheveled roll of your sleeve a collar pop so it's just those little things that um really will just set a look apart from the norm. Number six, you know I had to say it. You know it was coming. Contrast. Kind of what I said before, I don't think edge has to be this like obvious thing of like tattoos or black or combat boots or whatever. Edge to me can just come from contrast. Let's say you're wearing this real nice suit. Whereas yeah, you can definitely keep that sophistication with like a button up shirt or you know, a turtleneck, whatever it may be. And you're gonna have a real beautiful look. For me, if you want to add in a bit of edge, you got to add in some contrast. So for example, I put a kind of v-neck sweetheart cami underneath that's really tight fitting. And to me, that was, it elevated the look with a bit of edge in the fact that it was contrast. And to me, that edges up a look. This can happen with all sorts of things. It could happen within the outfit with the pieces. It could be bringing in just a certain type of shoes. It can be any sort of categories, as long as they're sort of contrasting categories, just meaning more like sophisticated with youthful playfulness. Maybe it's tomboy with sexiness. Whatever it is, you know, you can find the counterpoint to whatever it is you're wearing and add in that contrast. And that to me is adding edge. And tip number seven is being daringly innovative. More so than anything, what I mean by this is just embracing yourself, embracing your own sort of style tweaks, embracing your own creativeness. And I think for me, this was huge for my kind of style rebirth is when I started to ignore the hype, ignore all the trends, all the forecasts, all that kind of stuff, and more just focus on myself and my own personal style aesthetic and what I sort of like to wear and just being open to all these different elements, being open to everything and keeping my eyes open and seeing when there's just like a little detail of something that I can then incorporate into my look. You can pull inspiration from anybody and then in just embracing what you know, sort of works for you will ultimately give you that innovation, will give you that uniqueness, um, ultimately giving you that edge. When you look up the definition of edgy, it is actually says daringly innovative. And so I think that is like the perfect way to end this is, yeah, just kind of to always be thinking, how can I be daringly innovative? And it does not have to be, I'm not trying to put pressure on you for every single day of like trying to figure out, you know, like, how am I gonna be innovated for, for today? It's not like you have to have this every single, single day. I think it's just more about being open to like different possibilities. And I think when you do that, it's then like inspiration will strike, you know, every once in a while and give you those, those, you know, daringly innovative ideas and style tweaks or pieces or whatever it is, or different ways of styling things. And that will definitely add some edge to your looks. All right, you guys, those are my tips to always look edgy. Yes. This is not me saying that you have to have edge to have style. This is just more speaking to my style mood of always wanting to have edge. But I hope that you found today's episode helpful. If you did, give me the thumbs up, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe for future weekly episodes. All of this definitely helps a girl out with that algorithm, with breaking through that YouTube wall and getting this face out into the world. So thank you very much. With that, have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, love and support each other. And we will definitely be chatting soon. Bye.